Destruction is a core mechanic of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. In every duel, cards are destroyed, either by battle or card effect, sent to the graveyard only to return unharmed in the next game. But what if they didn't return? What if the cards destroyed in a duel were actually destroyed? Or to put it in Master Duel terms, dusted? Would it be possible to climb the competitive ladder with a deck that is crumbling to dust in your very hands? I don't know. But there's only one way to find out. I'm Hardleg Joe, if in ya didn't know, and this is the Deck Devastation Challenge. Beginning from a fresh account, I'll kick off this journey with just 20 packs and the two starter decks you get for free. From there, I'll attempt to climb the competitive ladder from Rookie all the way to Master 1. Each time I win a duel, I'll get to open one new pack and craft a card if I have the dust. But win or lose, every card destroyed in the game is destroyed for real, forcing me to plan and build more strategically than ever before. Will I be able to overcome the devastation and reach Master 1 before the end of the year? Or will I only end up destroying my own sanity? Hard to say, hard to leg, but uh, you know, we won't know until we try, so let's go ahead and jump on into it. Let's just, uh, smashing ground. Bye-bye. And there you go! It's that easy! But after putting up a poll for Twitch chat, they have decided that Lightning Storm is the one to crash. Mm, yeah. Oh! Didn't see you there. You probably noticed I'm in an entirely different shirt. That's because it's a new day. We're officially on the second stream. These are weekly streams, so the second week of doing this. And uh, at the time of recording, I still haven't put up the episode on YouTube, so I haven't gotten a ton of feedback, but I've gotten some feedback from the people watching the stream, and I feel like I need to do a little bit of, like, an FAQ. Uh, really, there's just one frequently asked question. It's just asked in a whole bunch of different ways. There's a lot of people asking, like, you know, what if a card is banished? What if it's sent to the graveyard? What if it gets destroyed and negated like a spell trap? What if a spell trap gets destroyed by MST or your monster gets destroyed by your own dark hole? Do these things count? And the, the answer is, if it's destroyed, I destroy it. It's, it's that simple. If it says anything else, it's not destroyed. Hopefully that should solve like 90% of the questions that I continue to get about this series. It's, it's very, very simple. Although, uh, as simple as it is, I, I have also been getting a bunch of people asking about adding a new mechanic in, making it a little more complicated, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. Uh, specifically, there's this idea that if I resurrect a card that gets destroyed, like with Call of the Haunted or Monster Reborn, and it, it survives the rest of the duel, then that should save it from being decrafted. And I think that's an interesting idea. It adds stakes. It, uh, it, it sort of incentivizes me to stay in duels even when I lose cards because I might be able to, to save them in some manner. Um, but it also overcomplicates things. It adds another rule onto the list of rules. So I'm going to leave it up to you all watching on YouTube. You can comment down in the comments. Say, um, hmm, what should, what should be the word? I need to think something I can control F so that I can easily find if you vote. Okay, so if you want that to be a rule, type flank steak. If you don't want that to be a rule, type vegan salad. <laughs> and then at the end of the week, I'll count up all of those and we'll see which one wins. But yeah, it's a brand new day and we will get back into dueling. But before we do, there's a few little things we need to take care of. First of all, we've, we've got another UR ticket. It's still part of the event. These, these 25th anniversary tickets. I've got two of them, but I feel like opening two at once, that's too many. So we'll get one this week and then next week we can get another one. But we'll go ahead and add this. This will give me another just free bonus pack and a free UR. And if you're asking like, well, you didn't win a duel, what do you do to get these? They're, they're just bonus. We decided in the first episode, the Twitch chat, that these would be legal. 
If, uh, if, if people complain enough, like if you, you really think that this is unfair down in the comments, let me know. And we can always just like put them on a no-fly list. Uh, either way, we get we get a harpy pack. Hey, nice. Maybe I'll get a harpy's feather duster as my royal rare. That would be neat. Uh, there's an infernity card. I forget that these are still secret packs, so the first half can be literally anything. There's a Goki card we can't use. Uh, our second avian, Jirak Synchro, which are they're all awful. Uh, the big cattle drive. If you control a beast, beast warrior, winged beast, draw one for each kind. You cannot activate other spell traps. Probably not going to be useful. Harpy Lady Sisters, probably not going to be useful. Uh, alluring Mirror Split. If a Harpy is destroyed by battle, that's, that's, that's not going to work in this series. And Harpy's Hunting Ground. The, the thing about this card, the most notable feature of it, is that it's mandatory. If you summon a Harpy while this is on the field, you must destroy a spell trap, even if this is the only spell trap. That often happens... Which is probably why we're never going to play Harpies, because I'd end up blowing this up every single bit game I play. But we do get one special UR. There are some decent ones in here. Again, a Harpies Feather Duster. Will we get the Unstoppable Removal? No. No, we got a Cyber Slash Harpy Lady. I mean, it is a generic Synchro, technically. Uh, you could use one Harpy as a tuner. This card's name becomes Harpy Lady. When a spell trap is activated, you could target one monster or one Harpy Lady, return it to the hand. So, you know, as a generic synchro, they activate a spell, you bounce a monster. It's not great, but we might use it at some point. Kind of like the other Royal UR we got. And it's, you know, it's unstoppable. So if we just want a six that we can make, that we don't have to worry about it dying by battle, then, then, then we're good. And speaking of destroyed by battle, you know, there is one bit of criticism. I don't think anyone said this to me, but it's something I noticed watching back the first stream, which is that for a series entirely about cards being destroyed, almost nothing was destroyed. And the more I thought about it, the more I felt like we needed to change that. Not only so it was more thematic, but also because if we're going to craft anything when we win, we're going to need uh, points. N points, R points, SR, UR. So I decided to go ahead and do the thing. We are playing crawlers this episode, at least to start with. We've got all the crawlers in here, which yes, if they get run over by battle, they are destroyed, they are gone. And that's fine. We kind of want that to happen so we can build up some dust as we're going. Especially, we want these, these extra deck monsters. There's no way we're getting to master with these. So I'm just trying to summon these and like, you know, if we can win a game, great, we get free packs. If not, they get destroyed and we get UR dust, so at least later on. And yeah, that's basically what we're playing here. Not only do we have all the crawlers, but we have a couple other cards that like, I just don't think we're going to use, like Trap Tricks, Atrax. This is just an insect. You can use insects to make this thing. And like, even if we end up making a Trap Tricks deck, we're not playing Atrax. So I'm just putting in here to get destroyed. Aulu Mirage, funny card, hopefully it gets destroyed. Um, Crystal God Tistina. I'm not playing a Tistina deck. I don't even have a way to summon this, but if I can get the monsters out and I'm going to lose anyway, I might as well just like tribute summon it. We're just putting it in here, hoping we can launch it into battle and then maybe get some SR dust. Um, as far as spell traps, we're, we're, we're really low on playables. Really, it's just the stuff in the structure deck. I tried to get rid of some of them. We're playing three of the field spell. We're playing the, uh, the world legacy mind meld, which is kind of a negate for crawlers. I put in the wiretap because it's an SR that we don't mind losing. Um, but really, we just didn't have a whole lot. So smashing ground, threatening roar, and memory of an adversary are all in here. These two can help me save stuff like the Crawler Spine that I might actually want to continue losing, or using, <laughs> that I don't want to uh, lose. And then we've just got some removal, just some fun cards in general. So yeah, we're going to take this, we're going to jump into the duels, and as I always remind people on the ladder climb, you know, these are fairly long episodes. If you don't like all my talking and everything, there's, there's time codes down below. Maybe I should have told you about that before, but... 
you know, now you know for future. You get to future episodes, you see me talking about a deck, you're like, just get to the action. You you could jump to the action. It's easy. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's jump into it. This is duel number nine. Win and we win a rank. And I guess we're going first now with this deck. We wanted to go second before because we were playing the um uh, the, the mech knights, but now we want to set a card. Even if setting them will get them destroyed. Although this doesn't even do anything. Target two crawlers, add them. When an opponent activates an effect while you control a crawler, the activated effect becomes return one face-up monster your opponent controls. Yeah, so this wouldn't be face-up. So I guess I just set the Crusadia crawler. We'll just set one. Um, I guess we set this too because then we can like normal summon it and maybe do something. And hopefully they don't have, like, Harpy's Feather Duster, otherwise I just lose one copy of each of these. Someone's saying I should normal the crawler. Yeah, maybe. Okay, we're going against Blue Eyes. Target one, face-up monster you control. Alright, we got Protector with Eyes of Blue. Do you have another level one tuner you could summon? No, just Protector Pass. Yeah, let's go ahead. We'll put this out. Defense mode. Big booty, 2100. Tribute one effect monster, target one effect monster your opponent controls. Send it to the graveyard, then special summon one level seven or higher. Huh. Oh, it has to be a monster effect. Well, there's, there's blue eyes. You can only attack with one monster the turn you activated this card and they already attacked. So they cannot attack again! Yeah, I just noticed that I thought this was any card or effect, but it's specifically a monster effect, which is not going to be useful against a monster with no effect. All right, they set a card. Two cards. Took them a while to figure that out. You can target one face-up monster, send one normal monster. Gains attack. Okay. Until the end of this turn. Okay, so they can just send one... Oh, just putting a blue eyes in the graveyard, you know. We're gonna take the damage. Uh, Block Spider. This is actually something I got out of the Legacy Packs. So I can set this and even if it gets destroyed, we're, we're not getting anything. I know I said the point of this deck was to, to have cards get destroyed. I still wanna keep things if I can. And this specifically takes crawlers. Okay, so my plan does not work at all. I was thinking like, oh, I'll be able to make that and then I can float into Crawler's Spine and take this out because they don't seem to have anything. But no, I need more Crawlers and this just like gets Crawlers from the graveyard back too. Fuck! <laughs> I can't negate their monster effects if they don't have any! <laughs> oh. Well, maybe I should have summoned the thing. Uh, what does this do? You can add one uh, fusion spell. All right. They had monochroid. <laughs> During the battle phase, if five attacks have been declared, you could su is this, is, no, this couldn't possibly be like a, um, a masochist deck. So they're fusion summoning. What can they make? Blue eyes and the dragon. Blue eyes, tyrant dragon. Unaffected by trap cards or effects. If this card battled, you could target a set trap in your graveyard and set it. And fortunately, they don't have any traps in their graveyard. Ironically, that puts me on less, le or the like. They would have done more damage just keeping Blue Eyes and the 1800 out. They fused it away for 400 more attack. <laughs> Yeah, and unfortunately, they're unaffected by this, so I really just need... I mean, if I draw Smashing Ground, or I draw, uh, again, Crawler Spine, we're, we're set. Threatening Roar. They're unaffected by spell <laughs> trap cards. Now, this, this affects the opponent, though. I think? I have no idea how this works. I guess we're gonna find out. Aw. Oh, Priestess with eyes of blue. Let's go. Are you going to attack with the zero attack? Yes. Just for fun, you know? Okay, come on, something good. 
that might make this worth it. So we're gonna normal summon the Atrax. We're going to activate Crusadia Crawler. We're going to link both of these off into Nuragoros. Behold, the Link Monster of Eternity. A big grabby claw hand. Because I can go into the Priestess. At least get on the, the board. 1900. Eh. Get out of here. And then if they attack into me, I've got essentially Link Honest. You could discard this card and your opponent's monster loses 3,000. Silver's Cry. Oh, they're bringing back the blue eyes. Yeah, I think I want to do this for now. We're going to Threatening Roar. Oh, okay. I don't know why you would activate that effect. <laughs> Target of blue eyes you control. Shuffle into the deck. Special summon this card. 3,000 attacker? Nah. Uh, and yeah, this doesn't... I, yeah, go ahead. If you'd prefer to have a zero I can crash into, then by all means. This may be unaffected by traps, but my opponent cannot attack. And I was, I was, I was like, trying to figure things out and my opponent solved the problem for me. Okay, we're good. Let's go ahead. World Legacy Survivor. Look at five. See what we can get. Ooh, I'm taking that spine. And now we've got a bunch in the graveyard. So we can actually use stuff. Yeah, so we're just going to normal summon the spine. We're going to use this to make... Quarly Arc. Get our UR out because it does more damage. And now if we, if they activate a monster effect, we can bounce this and then get the, uh, that out of the graveyard. And this still gets out of the graveyard, right? Two crawler, yeah. Okay. Battle phase. 2,000 damage. All right, all right. Uh, do I set another one of these? No. No, we're good. Oh, I don't get the recovery effect from this because they changed the way things work, didn't they? What What are you doing? Why would you do that? You You saw what happened last time. I I am I am I am baffled. Sometimes you win because you win, and sometimes you win because the opponent loses. Holy fuck! That has to be a bot. They're taking too long for a bot. I don't think it's a bot. They've got, like, decked out and all the blue eyes stuff. We somehow... <laughs> we got victory from the jaws of defeat. We beat the blue eyes menace. And we didn't, we didn't even lose a card. Despite trying to. We're, we're fine. <laughs> I've got one pack. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and open up. We get one legacy pack. See what we got. Bump it up. Two cards. Probably not anything good. Fortress Warrior. Take no battle damage from tax evolving this card, and once per turn, this card can't be destroyed by battle. Not actually bad in the kind of meta we're facing right now. And Media Rain? During this turn, when your monster attacks with an attack that's higher than the defense of your opponent's defense position monster, inflict the difference as damage. Possibly a burn card, but probably, probably not. All right, and for our one pack, we're gonna stick with uh, Name of the Champions. It's got all the rare stuff in it. I still don't think this is uh, uh, the best move, but we don't really wanna add to our Mech Knight yet. We're still trying to unlock some packs. So let's just try this out and see what the hell we get. No URs, so nothing particularly great, but you know, I've been, so oh, okay. An SR perhaps. Oh, there's a UR right there. Well, never mind then. All right, we got Destiny Hero Draw Hand. Good hero support. There's a third Atrax. We might actually put that in. Or if nothing else, it can replace the one that gets removed. Brigand the Glory Dragon. Fallen of Albaz stuff. Virtual World Gigi. Uh, I don't think I can make use of that. Another Draw Hand. 
Mecha Phantom Beast Hamstrat. When this is flipped up, summon two tokens. It's increased by the level of tokens. While you control a token, this can't be destroyed. So it saves itself. Um, you can tribute one token, target a Mecha Phantom Beast, special summon it. If I get more, that might be something that's useful early on. And another Exosister. Okay, what's our UR? Do we get the Ash Blossom? No! We get a second Boral Load Savage Dragon! I can't even use the first one, and now we've got two! You know, now I'm like, maybe we should try to build towards a Synchro Strat, because then if that gets destroyed, we have another one. Alright, one more win and we get into Silver. Can we get into silver? We're gonna go first once again. You know, we there are a lot of people saying maybe we should have some kind of reward for, for ranking up into the next rank, but uh, it's been so easy, I don't feel like I've really earned a reward. Maybe I'm just doing really well, but uh, we'll see. We'll set this, and we'll set this, and yeah, we can use this next turn with whatever we search off of this. I don't want to set too much because, again, a Harpy's Feather Duster will, like... I mean, Threatening Roar came out of the structure, so it's safe. Pawns, not so much. Royal Magical Library. So it's like that, then, is it? All right! We're, we're in for an Exodia game. Let's see if they can do it. Oh, there we go. Well, there we, we get another loss. Uh, there was nothing I could do. We got exodia while playing Crawlers. Yay, Exodia! But I didn't lose any cards, they didn't destroy anything, so, you know, not that bad. Alright! Just a, just a little Exodia, you know. Fortunately, when you're in bronze, all you have to do is win. Like, losing doesn't push you back down. Which is crazy to- I, I understand if they made it so that, like, oh, you can't D-rank. But, uh, you, you can't- you can't get a- push down at all? Just any amount of wins. All right, we open with the Tistina card. Tistina's pizza rolls. And we got our searcher and we got pawns. Nothing to save it though. So most likely we're just going to lose the receptor if they have anything with over 1200 attack. Marmoning Captain. Shuffle one card from your hand into the deck and then draw one card. If it's a monster, you can special summon it. Is it a monster? Doesn't look like it. Oh. Technically, I mean, if you're lucky, if you could stack your deck, you could summon anything. But it doesn't have over 1,200 attack, so our receptor might just be fine. Oh, and there's there's threatening roar, so we could protect it. Yeah, let's do it. It'll be more safe. Set this here. Set this here. Moving it to defense position. And, and they're not even activating the effect. I mean, why why would you? Uh, yeah, I don't think we want to let them know we have this yet. We're fine. We're good. We're set. Oh, hey, Crusadia Crawler. Okay, let's go ahead. We're going to flip up the Axon. We're going to target one of their spell traps and be like, pow, get out of here. Mirror wall! <laughs> well, that's a thing, I tell you what. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set Crawler Receptor, and we're gonna activate World Legacy Pawns. Uh, this lets us target a face-down monster and change it face up. Hoo-ha! So now we get its flip effect, and we can search ourselves a spine. We can have spine time. Oh, uh, we could also summon one from the graveyard. Maybe, no, let's get Spine. It's fine. I should have summoned this into attack mode. I would have done more damage. Uh, but we're good. We're fine. Uh, do I make... Yeah, we make Quarly Arc. Send these two off. They didn't get destroyed. Bada bingo, bada bango. Big spooky. I can't help but think of that as just like... A goofy guy with a tomato flowing over his head. And with that mouth, he's like, he's got that like... Kind of mouth. I don't know what that voice is. Something unlocked deep within the recesses of my mind. 
But yeah, we got a 2,000 beater, and we've got this. If this card is special summoned to his own a Link Monster points to, add a World Legacy card. So I can search the Lance by summoning this to where the Quarly Arc points to. It really is neat to see these decks that have like all this cool like resources and strategy and stuff that you just don't get to see in the modern game because it's way too slow. Magician Souls. That's... That's an interesting thing. Okay, they've got the Dark Magekin. There he is. We faced Blue Eyes. It was only a matter of time. End of the main phase. Yeah, go to the... Oh. They're not attacking. They're afraid of my back row. Okay, let's summon this here. Let's use this effect. Let's go ahead and uh, grab this. Now we're safe. <laughs> Draw a card. Another one. We can search again. All right. And then we we set our spine. We activate World Legacy's pawns. We flip the spine up. We're going to just give the give it the old pip popperoo. Bye-bye. And then we're going to link these two off for the other one. Nuragoros. Oh, uh, what does this do? Crawlers this points to can't be destroyed by battle. And this one, if I got two, if I got four... Okay. Okay, I'm slowly getting some stuff. Okay, we've got like 4,000. Uh, let's go there. Let's go ahead and set this. And we're good. Crawler's just too strong. Well, chat, we knew this was going to happen someday. It, it finally did, you know? Um, my extra deck monsters are being hit with Dark Hole, and there's nothing I can do to stop this. Goodbye, crawlers. You served us well. Now, that being said, they both float. So we could be like, I'll take this, and I'll take this. And then this one will go, and we could get this one. Oh, I guess I gotta pick two. Now, do they have the second Dark Hole or the Raigeki? Because if so, I'm gonna be doom screwed. Let me write down what I'm losing here. Mahad! <laughs> Uh, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, special summon a Dark Magician from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Well, shit. Um, no. I'm gonna say no to this. No fights for you. Okay, and then in the end phase, we're gonna go ahead and activate this. We're going to flip up the Axon. Just get rid of this other back row. Goodbye! Gonna draw another spine. Ooh, that's even better. Okay, so we flip up the spine. Um, you can only use each effect of... Why are these hard ones per turn? They're flip effect monsters. Just destroy that. They get to summon a Dark Magician. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, what does this do again? Change every monster face down, then you can send all cards face up cards to the graveyard. Unfortunately, it's got 2,000 attack, and this has 2,100 defense, so that's actually not the best I could do. Okay, let's flip the receptor. Get a crawler monster. Target one spell trap, negate its effects. Sure, buddy. I wasn't really going to use the pawns anyway, but, you know, if you want to do that, go ahead. Let's go ahead, let's just grab this one. And I'm just I'm just gonna re I'm just gonna rebuild the board, chat. I'm I have I have one each of the other ones. Quarley Arc comes back! If you think this deck is dead, you're wrong. 
I mean, next time I duel, I won't be able to do this because I won't have all of them, but you know. Uh, yeah. Summon this. That gets its effect. Yeah, let's go for the field spell. Activate the field spell. More attack! Activate! Uh, Dendrite has the most attack of any main deck crawler. More attack! Now I don't even need this to get over your Dark Magician, I can just attack over it! Big, big crawlers coming down. Everybody knows it's the crawler frown. Uh, I think this wins me the game. Do I just have game anyway? I think I just have game anyway. Yeah, who even needs it? 2,500, and then 900. This isn't game anyway. I don't know why I thought so. I guess because this looks like a 2,200, even if it's in defense. Okay. They've got, they've got one more turn. Uh, let's see what they could do. Surely they won't have a Raigeki as well and just completely decimate my entire extra deck. Oh no! Time Wizard! <laughs> I've never said, oh no, Time Wizard. They're about to get it twisted. It's all down to a coin toss now. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir, the most you ever lost on a coin toss. High stakes coin toss. No! <laughs> oh, goodbye, everyone. I'll remember you in therapy. <laughs> well, I mean, Dendrite activates. Quarley Arc activates. Everything, everything floats. But now all. <laughs> oh, I should. I was like, should I use the lance? Nah, we should save it. Just I don't know what I was saving for. We should have just gone. Oh, all right. Well, end phase. <laughs> Fuck you, buddy. Tired of your shit. Ruined all my monsters with a damn coin toss. Most impactful guy. Uh, yep, I just got to be more aggressive. I don't know. I forgot to be aggressive. Okay, it's time for the crawlers to get their revenge. Change to attack. No. Flip, yeah. And this would be the thing where like, if we had the thing where a card that gets recovered doesn't get destroyed, it's like, no, no, I put them back in the extra deck. They're not ending there, we should be fine. And I might even continue the duel just so I could use this again to recover the other ones. Okay, let's just, let's just go in, let's just end it. But yeah, that rule's currently not there. So we got another win, but at what cost? I wanted some more SR and UR points and now I have them, boyos. <laughs> oh, and we rank up into silver. That, that, that gets us something special too. I'd be more excited if I wasn't about to decraft a bunch of shit. <laughs> All right, ladies and non-ladies, we get a whole bunch of rewards for winning and especially for, for ranking up into silver. But before the celebrations can commence, we first must send off our sacrificed souls, lost to the Ageless Ones, forever dismantled. I mean, I can craft them again if I really wanted to, but uh, I don't... Wow, there, I thought there would be more of a, like, a thing coming up, you know, all the stuff. No, it's just, just all gone. And with that, I think so is our crawler deck. Like, I'm not sure what we can do with the entire extra deck gone. I probably should have played that a little safer, but, you know, we'll see what we can get. We're about to get a lot more cards. So one rule I didn't mention in the intro, one thing that I haven't brought up until now, is that there is a reward bonus for reaching the next tier on the ladder. You know, the first time I reach silver, gold, platinum, I get to open one of these bundle sets, which contain 10 master packs, hey, 10 more cards, you know, we get more for our collection, 
But more importantly, they each contain one card, which due to the Master Duel mechanics, cannot be decrafted, which means it's immune to the challenge. And they're all very powerful staples. It means I can get an Imperm, or a Solemn Judgment, or a Lightning Storm that is safe from being decrafted. And I kind of went back and forth on this over whether or not I should do this, because especially early on, this feels like it's a lot easier than the other Masochist challenges. But again, I know that once I get to Diamond or Master or even Platinum, it's going to be an ordeal to rank up at all. So we're having it easy now, because I know it's going to be difficult later. And for our very first bundle, even though Ash is really tempting in Perm, I think I'm going to go with the Forbidden Droplet bundle. Droplet is especially good in this challenge because it allows you to send cards on your field to the graveyard. So as long as my opponent has a monster on the field, I can sort of dodge out of certain removals, like save some of my cards, especially even the spell traps, by just activating this and sending them off before they get destroyed. So let's go ahead. Our, our silver deal is the uh, Forbidden Droplet Bundle. And let's see what the hell we get. All right, first pack, we're getting Junk Servant. If you control a junk, you can special summon it. Not particularly great. I'm not playing Tin Dangles. You cannot make me. Uh, Evil Sword, no. Dwimmered Glimmer. Activate this by banishing one monster you control or a monster in the graveyard. Special summon, this is a normal monster with the same level, but none of the attacker effects. For a second, I was like, oh, this... This can technically save stuff, but at what cost? Probably not enough. UAs. UAs are always fun. Uh, Queen Jin Dragon. This is a generic rank 4, but it only helps dragon type monsters. They can't be destroyed by battle, though, so, you know. And this does work. This can summon my blue eyes out, so. Maybe? Maybe. Uh, Karakuri Watchdog. That is a level 4 tuner. And Gear Spring Spirit. Nice, uh, nice, uh, machine support. Okay, pack number two, and we've got a UR in here. Huh. S-Force Bridgehead, nope. Naturia Mantis, if I get to a Naturia deck, this is kind of good with the new support. Magiki Vapartu. It is generic. Detach one material, add a level four higher normal monster. I do have normals. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles the same attribute as a normal monster in your graveyard, yeah, I'll probably play this. If nothing else, it's an SR that I can, I can, uh, you know, throw into the fray to get more points. Supreme Dragon Zark. Talk about you are, well, maybe the new support, I'll be able to make this, who knows. Okay, what's our SR? We've got Sulfacord Cutia and... Amazing Time Ticket. Pay 800 life points, add an Amazement card from your deck to your hand, or set an Amazement Trap. Probably not playing Amazements, or Sulfa Chords, or Zark. Just, just not great. <laughs> Alright, next up we got Rescue Ace Fire Engine. The Rescue Ace is summoned, you can special summon this from your hand. Okay, I know one of the Rescue Aces is like a generic-ish hand trap kind of effect, but it's not that one. G Golem Dignified Trithillion. I mean, I do have Earth Monsters. Maybe this this is the new boss monster for all my um, crawlers, if I can get four of them on the field. All monsters must attract, attack this card if able. Battles, you could send an Earth from your hand to the graveyard. Yeah, we'll see. More Karakuris, and it's a royal! Bronze model Kunzaman. Or Bones. Bones, whatever. Well, we got we got a Karakuri. That should help with synchros, right? Except for I think this is Yeah, I'm locked into Earth Machines. So not not great. Blue Thunder, nice uh nice battle monster. I got the clock tower prison, so I can summon that dreadmaster now. Shit, I might put that in. Uh, Rookie for Hire, Magic Drain, nice little counter trap, and uh, Constellar Pollux. Okay, pack number four, we've got a Heroic Challenger that summons other Heroic Challengers. We've got Tribe Shocking Virus, 
Uh, a Melodious card. Ojama Yellow. Chris Strons. If only, if only Hulk wasn't banned, but it's for the best. Gagaga -ga -ga Revenge. A Magispector. If you control no monsters, you can normal summon this without tributing. I mean, it's a 2400 beater. I'll probably play that. Okay, pack number five, we've got the worst Vanquish Soul Monster. We've got the right arm of Exodia. We've got Malefic Red Eyes. Uh, the Star Seraph Monster that takes three level four lights. A Spellbook card, all right. And what are these? We got Arcana Knight Joker. Galaxy Soldier, if I get more light machines, that could actually be good. And Great Fly. That's great. Great for the winds. We got a wind link. Alrighty. Now I got a purple pack. Ooh, ah, special. Fancy chocolate. Huh. That's a zombie card that's not good. We got a fossil dina. Butter spy. Target one attack position. Change it to defense position. Yeah, I think I've got better traps already. Toon Briefcase. True Draco. What are these two? We got. Tally Ho Springins, which would be decent if we had more Springins, but I don't think we're building that. And Dark Rebellion Ixie Dragon. Well, there's a generic rank four we can use. Uh, its its days are probably numbered, but we do need UR points, and you know, until then, it's something we can do. So that's probably the first great card we've gotten out of here. Okay, next up we got a Super Heavy Samurai. Consolation prize of a monster sent from the hand of the graveyard. Target one of them and special summon it. I feel like that has synergy with something. The Amazonist Pendulum. Uh, 1900 Beater. Ogdo Addicts. Another, that's the third Karakuri. Artifacts, which are like unplayable in this challenge. And Silver Sentinel, which is just an artifact. It has to be destroyed um, and sent to the graveyard. Although, what was it? It's... You know, the artifacts would be playable if we change the rules that a revived monster um, doesn't get destroyed. Because these are destroyed, but then they come back. I guess just something to consider. I mean, I'm not probably not going to play artifacts regardless, but, you know, maybe. Okay, we got pack number eight, DD Trap Hole. When your opponent sets exactly one monster, target that and a monster you control, destroy them and banish them. Awful. Just awful. Silent Angler is an extender for water. It's our second Witchcrafter card, I think. Not that that would be great. It's our second Watt Cobra. So we can now do Watt Cobra search Watt Cobra. It's it's a thousand extra damage. This guy's funny in like Ixy decks. Played that Nebula Dragon. It is a level eight. I can reveal it in another that works with blue eyes. And then I can make uh, my, my rank eights. That's pretty neat. Twinkle Little Star. Not gonna play Abyss Actors. And what's the super rare? Mask Change. I've got an unfortunate amount of hero cards. I don't think I have a target for this yet. I mean, I don't have, like, I don't have an extra deck monster that can use it, but I do have heroes. Okay, pack number nine. Oh, I just, I just accidentally did all of them. They just all went through. Well, we got an instant contact. If I do ever get a fusion monster, I can summon it out for free. We got a Gravekeeper's card we're never going to use. A Bujin card we're never going to use. I think I already saw this and was like, that's useless. Got Ancient Gear Gajillatron Chimera, which is fun to say, but useless. An Evil Twin card, a Spiral Assault, and an Earth Machine thing. But oh no, it's only Infinitrax, and I don't think I have any more fit Infinitrax, at least not yet. Probably wouldn't play them even if I did, but we got, you know, we got like five or six Earth Machines. Okay, last pack. We've got Preta Planning. Gizmek Yada. Special summon this by tributing a normal summoned monster. And then you can immediately after this normal summon one monster, but you can't special summon monsters for the same rest of the turn. This might be playable. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. We only have two Blue Eyes, but if we ever get a third, maybe, maybe, a Green Turtle Summoner. It's a nice flip monster to add to the flip deck if I do that anymore. Dragon Maid, 
Fire Fist, Evatile, and Salamangrate Violet Chimera. Ew. I guess it's a super poly target if I ever get that. So, you know, we've unlocked a lot of secret packs. I'll have to look into that because we still get our one pack that we get for winning and our one craft. And we have the stuff to craft now, so let's see what we can do there. So now that that's done, we get our one reward pack for winning the duel. And we're gonna try something a little bit different. We had uh, unlocked this secret pack while opening all those master packs. And it's the one that features the punks and also the Karakuris. We've already got like some really strong Karakuri stuff. So if we just happen to get one of these or, or one of these, like, yeah, we can make it. It probably won't last very long, but it'll at least be something. More importantly though, we have a whole bunch of decent, good, like level eight synchros. And the punks are really good at making level 8 synchros, and also level 11s. And Psychic End Punisher is something that, like, could be a boss monster for this entire series. It's unaffected by all card effects while your life points are less than your opponent's. And it also gains a whole bunch of attacks, so it's unlikely to be destroyed by battle. So this might be a build around, something that we could make, like, even all the way up into, uh, like, Diamond and Master, possibly. So we're gonna try to open one of these, see what we can get, and uh, you know, maybe we'll stick with this, maybe we won't, but let's try it out. One pack, going in. 